There are quite a few different material options available for FDM 3D printing, each ranging from durability to flexibility to price to ability to print. Here at SD3D, we've standardized to 16 different material options, but those numbers will increase over time. The two most commonly used materials are PLA and ABS. PLA is a biodegradable material derived from cornstarch and is the most cost-effective material to print in. While PLA has a very high tensile strength, its low elongation and the fact it can deform at 120 degrees Fahrenheit make it a very brittle material at low infill. That said, PLA has a very small shrinkage rate, making it perfect for large parts, molds, and prototypes. ABS is a much more mechanically strong material due to its high glass transition temperature and bend before breaking. Legos are made of ABS, and this is the go-to material for the majority of mechanical applications. ABS can also be acetone vapor finished since it's soluble in acetone. The process costs more, but will make your part much more watertight and give it a shine that is comparable to injection mold quality. Now aside from those two main materials, we offer quite a lot of unique options here at SD3D, each with their own application. For instance, we have PETG, which has similar strength properties as ABS, yet is more chemically resistant and can be printed much larger without warping. To polycarbonate ABS, which can handle much higher glass transition temperatures than ABS. To our nylons, which are quite strong and some are even FDA approved. To our carbon fiber reinforced blends, which are light and strong and are some of our strongest materials, including carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And finally, to our flexible materials, each with their own flexibility and their own shore hardness, all the way up to our most flexible material, Ninja Flex. Nylons and flexible materials come with a hidden cost of being quite difficult to print. They require a PVA mixture be painted onto the print bed in order for proper adhesion, and they cannot print very complex parts. These materials are more likely to ooze, which can result in a hairy and less precise print. Support material is also very hard to remove due to its very strong layer adhesion, meaning scarring will be far more common on these materials. If you have further questions, be sure to visit sd3d.com materials. Here, we go over each material option along with their tensile strength, elongation, and glass transition temperatures. We then compare each of these options via graphs and charts. Well, thanks for watching. Hope that helped to figure out what material is right for your project. And if you have any further questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for even more 3D printing tips and tutorials.